I'm Ziad Morsi. I'm an, um, a visiting lecturer at uh, the Alexandria Center for Maritime Archaeology in Alexandria University. And uh, for the past 12, 13 years, I've been focusing on the study of maritime heritage in Egypt. Climate change, especially in Alexandria, it has been a very big aspect of the change in the city. So the city was mainly on both sides, with both sides, the northern and the southern with water. So the northern is the Mediterranean and the southern is the uh, Lake Mariutis. But eventually Lake Mariutis was dried up also due to climate change, but in ancient time. So the main branches that were feeding the uh, Lake Mariutis started to silt up and uh, due to the changes in the environment, the lake started to um, uh, evaporate. All the water was starting to evaporate until the lake became completely arid. But before that happens, a lot of other issues happen, especially a number of natural disasters, especially in the 4th century AD. Uh, and then another one in the 9th century, another one in the 11th century, and the, the last one that completely tumbled down Alexandria, ancient Alexandria. All these series of events that happened gradually changed the, the coastal outline of the city and the landscape of the city. And at the same time, there is the sea level rise, and the global sea level rise, but it wasn't that much affecting Alexandria. But the most significant effect was the, the series of um, devastating earthquakes and tsunamis um, that one by one started jeopardizing the rock of the city, the main rock of the city where the city is built on. But once Egypt's power has faded, Alexandria's famous lighthouse falls into disrepair. The land beneath it slowly subsides into the sea, and in the 14th century it finally collapses after it's struck by an earthquake. The Pharos is thought to be lost here, beneath 23 feet of water, at the entrance of Alexandria Harbor. As the Mediterranean begins to empty, surprising shapes come into view. Nearly 3,000 granite blocks scattered across three acres of the seabed. These are not natural rock formations, but clearly the work of human hands. Statue bases, chunks of pillars, all from a building of monumental proportions. The drowned ruins of a genuine ancient wonder, the Pharos Lighthouse. And this is why now ancient Alexandria is almost all of it is underwater and it's under eight to 10 meters of depth. Pai Bey built his fortress on top of the remaining of the lighthouse. And this is why Alexandria as we know it today is completely different than the ancient Alexandria that was built by the Ptolemies and was modified by the Romans. And this is why in any archeological dig in Alexandria, we need to dig between eight and 10 or 12 meters to arrive to the level of the Ptolemaic Alexandria. It's a number of Alexandrias on top of each other. Alexandria is built on, um, on the two first two ridges of the northern coast. So the northern coast of, of Egypt um, is formed by eight different limestone ridges. Um, two, one of them is under the water and the rest are on the land. Um, Alexandria was built on two of them. The mainland was built on ridge number one, and Pharos is ridge number zero. So these ridges, when there, there are a lot of seismic action, a lot of tsunamis, these ridges move a little bit by a little bit. The remaining of the city of Alexandria under the water um, were affected a lot by the environment because of the uh, sewage system in Alexandria, and that was the biggest issue in the water in Alexandria. At one hand, it's good because it is a kind, it, it protects 
the ruins or the archaeological uh, artifacts under the water in the sediment but at the same time it's very dangerous because it's a it's an organic matter so it, it affects a lot of the material the ancient materials that uh, are uh, under the water since antiquities it doesn't have much of effect on granite so this is why we have the, the remaining of the lighthouse because all, the whole lighthouse was made from pink granite that was brought from Aswan. During the 21st century, we have a lot of an, a large number of cement oil and oil and gas factories that started to be built, especially in western of Alexandria, in and around the Max and the Agami uh, area. The current of the Mediterranean Sea comes from the west to the east and the prevailing wind is from the west to the east. So anything is being dumped into the water, it comes to the east. And the east is the main Alexandria now, the eastern harbor and the rest of Alexandria all the way to Abu Ir. So in Alexandria, we have three main hubs for fishing. It's El Max and the main one in Amfushi, which is the biggest one, and another one in Abu Ir. Max district is a, is a fisherman district. The bombing station in El Max created a channel between the Lake Mariutis and the Mediterranean. And this channel, it made it favorable for some species of fish to, to grow there. Lately, the, um, the government decided to enhance the harbor, the big harbor of Alexandria, and they decided to actually build a new harbor in El Max. And that means moving all of the indigenous or uh, the traditional housing of the people. So the people had their houses on the both sides of the channel, anchored their boats on the channel in front of their houses. So it was very convenient for them. And this is why everyone is calling, used to call El Max the Venice of Alexandria. Of course, some of the housing, we call it vernacular housing. It's unofficial housing. It was made to fit the environment and to fit the purpose of the people.